Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we've traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. Because we're a federal facility, we're not open throughout the year. So on four Sundays of summer, we open up to the public. Today we're featuring the National Synchrotron Light Source 2. It's our newest facility. It's a massive building. It's a billion dollar investment by the United States Department of Energy. And we'll be showing people what it does. Before starting the tour of the light source, a few stations demonstrated the principles that make this massive machine work. A key element is liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen is a cryogen used at the light source here to cool samples and detectors and lots of parts of the machinery inside. But for the purposes of display, we're just having some fun with it. These flowers are fake plastic flowers for displays. And these flowers are real. We'll dip the plastic flower in the liquid nitrogen first. So now we'll grab a real flower and we'll dip it in. The big difference between fake flowers and real flowers is that a fake flower has no water in it and a real flower is full of water. So they behave a lot differently with the being frozen. The light source also analyzes crystals and at this station, kids participate in a delicious demonstration. So we're trying to teach the kids uh, what crystal lattices are and how we crystallize proteins and exactly what a crystal is. So at the station next to us, we've got actual crystals. And our station, we just use gumdrops and toothpicks to represent uh, molecules and their bonds. And to help illustrate how the building works, there's a mini synchrotron. The vacuum pump is what takes out all the air from the ring, because if there's air in there, the electrons will stick to the air and not stick to each other. Then next, we turn on the magnets, and the magnets will steer the electrons to make sure that they're actually going in the circle. Otherwise, they can crash into the wall or not stay where they're supposed to. Then the next, we insert electrons into the beam. And then lastly, we can open the shutter, and that'll allow the, the light that's admitted from the edge from the electrons to flash into there and it'll go right into your sample. Now that we know how it all works, why do we need this huge machine? It's similar to a really powerful microscope. Because the wavelength of x-rays is so short, you can see very fine, very small structures. The electrons at light source travel virtually at the speed of light. Einstein said, as you try and get closer to the speed of light, you only get a little bit faster, but you get a lot more energy. And that's what we're interested in. We're electrons that are, have a lot of energy, and we take that energy and we wiggle the electrons, light comes out. And that is what we're interested in. Each individual beam line has what we call an insertion device, which wiggles the beam in a specific way that they need to, to create slow light that they want. There are enough beam lines to conduct over 60 simultaneous experiments. At this beam line, they're interested in creating high temperature superconductors. And superconductors are important because those are what gives us really um, powerful magnets, including uh, MRI machines. They use uh, helium temperatures to get the magnet as strong as it is. This technology can also help companies like Facebook and Google manage their data centers. For these large data centers, um, they have a, a large heat load and it's difficult to cool the, the electronics so that the computers run very efficiently. With some of the research that we do here at CSX with the high temperature superconductors, one could imagine that if we were able to get a room temperature superconductor, then you would end up not building up uh, heat as the electricity passes through the different electrical components. The NSLS2 building is so large that the researchers use bicycles to get around. The ring is just really long and really wide, and if we don't have the trikes, and it takes forever to get around. So every minute you waste walking is another minute you don't do research. Although all this technology is a lot to absorb, it was enthusiastically received by the visitors. I'm very excited. I, love, I don't even know what I'm looking at half the time, but that's fine. You know, you ask and people, people are very enthusiastic to give some answers, so that's good.